in this chapter, this is the first chapter, we will talk about accounting in general, what accounting means, uh, what it is, who uses it, and a few stuff like that. Okay? I will be also uploading, for those of you who might be interested, I'll be uploading as well uh, like a PDF file, a blackboard, that will talk about jobs, possible jobs, etc. in accounting. So we start with accounting. Accounting is the language of business. Why do we say that? Well, accounting talks about, it provides information on how the company is doing. Okay? What are the sales revenue? What expenses the company has recognized? Is the company making money or losing money? Is that one? Is that specific product generating revenues or losses? Or is it causing the company to lose money? So basically, this is the language of business. This is it provides reports that the company will be, uh, that different users will use to understand how the company is performing. Okay? So the idea here is that the accounting will identify and basically they will capture certain transactions and economic events. The sale of a product, uh, buying a truck, renting an office, something like that. All these things will be captured by the accounting system, and then this information can be used for, to make decisions. The man management can, for example, make decisions about, uh, let's say that, take Apple, for example. Whenever they, uh, they introduce a new product, what happens? They look at the sales, right? So when they introduce iPhone 6 and iPhone 6 Plus, what do they look at? Come on, what do they look at? When they basically when they look at the sales from sales revenues that were generated by uh, from selling iPhone 6, what do they look at? Sorry? iPhone 5 sales. They wanted to compare to iPhone 5 or 5S, etc. So they looked at previous years. They wanted to see did they sell as many or not. What else do they look at? They also look at information about how Samsung is selling their, their phone. Are they doing better than Samsung or Samsung is doing better than that? So all this kind of information, it would enable the company to make decisions in the future. For example, when they introduce the iPhone 6S, they would know where they went wrong. So for example, they had the bend gate. Are you familiar with the bend gate? This is where the phone would bend a little bit, right? They fix it in the following, they will fix it in the following model, right? And as apparently according to rumors, this is what they are doing. They use different material. So they use this to make decisions for future, for the future. This is what people also, they also use it to predict. So users, let's say that you are an investor, you want to buy, to invest in a certain company, you want to buy Apple stocks or Samsung stocks. You look at how they are doing, how much they are selling, and then based on that, you can predict that the stock price will go up or down. They say that they introduce a product that basically sucks. What will happen to their stock price? It will go down. So users, investors can use this information. They say that it's the bank. The bank wants to lend a certain company money. They need to look at the company, the company's information. And by information, we mean the numbers, their numbers. Can the company pay back their debts, yes or no? If the company is capable of paying their debt, they will give them the loan. If the company is at risk of default, the bank will not give them the loan. Okay? So this is basically when we talk about accounting. You have three main branches in accounting. Those are tax accounting, it's based on the policies that, like the IRS and the US, the IRS and the government, the US government, they decide on certain tax policies, and that does not only depend on pure accounting information, it also includes what? 
There's a lot of politics in it. So it's not just the economy, it's also politics in it. Which party is in the office, etc. We will all be covering tax accounting, except maybe a little bit. Managerial accounting is like the decisions that I told you about Apple, what they will do to fix, uh, basically to improve the sales of their products. Questions about, like, for example, which product is generating most money? Uh, what is the optimal price of a certain product? All this is decided using managerial accounting. This is where the company uses their internal data at a very disaggregate level. Disaggregate level means at a very detailed level. <clears throat> and the reason is that the company has access to their own accounting systems, so they have access to, they know each and every sale they made, they know how much every, uh, each product costs exactly how much it costs, and then they can use that information which is not available to users outside the company. Only management would have this information. They don't give it to everyone. Manager, that's managerial accounting. We won't do that. What we'll be doing is, what we'll, what we'll be talking about is financial accounting. Financial accounting talks mostly about, uh, it provides information to external users. Okay? What do we mean by external users? We'll see uh, in a second. Basically, this is, those are the financial statements of a certain company. Have you heard of financial statements? Uh, the income statement, the balance sheet of the company, those are <coughs> uh, statement of cash flows, etc. Those are the main reports that are presented, that are filed, and every <coughs> publicly traded company, every company on the stock market, is required to file those reports. Why? So that investors would know how the company is doing. You know, when you invest in a company, you are an owner. You are an owner of that company, right? So if you buy a stock. And Apple, you can say, hey, I own Apple. I only have one stock. But you are an owner there. You want to know how the company is managing your money. Right? Is the company losing money or they are making money? And why is that important? Because you can look at that time, you, can, you want to invest in a company, you look at Samsung and Apple, you see which one is making more money, more profits, and then you might invest in it. There are different, of course, different variables and different factors that would affect this decision, but this is in general. So, <clears throat> accounting, what accounting does is, has three main functions. It has three main functions. The first one is that it identifies economic events. What are economic events? The sale of a product, renting a house, paying your employees, something like that. So it identified that event, and then, bless you, it's not enough to just identify it. Okay, so the accounting system found that this, uh, this was an event. Next, what do they do? We need to record it in a standardized way. And then, even if you have the information laying in your system, what's the use of such information if it's not communicated to the people, to various stakeholders who are interested in that information? So for managerial accounting, for example, you have the detailed information sent or communicated in different types of people, like budget, etc., etc., to the uh, concerned departments. When it comes to, for example, financial accounting, you have different, those financial statements are made publicly available so that the investors and creditors and all these people will be able to look at it and see that, okay, so this is, this company is doing well. Let's invest in it. Let's give it, approve their own application, etc. So the role of accountants is to identify those economic events that need to be recorded, and after recording them, the role is to communicate that information to various stakeholders. And usually it's not just providing them with reports that no one understands but you. They have to be in a standardized way. I have to provide them with some kind of interpretation, usually in the form of racial analysis. Now what a lot of people do in companies is called bookkeeping. This only deals with 
one section. It only records those events. So it doesn't do the financial statements, etc. This is different. Any questions? Okay. So we have, in turn, we said that we have different information users. Those are people or entities or organizations that would use the information. We have two types of users. Internal users who are from within the company and external users who are from outside. You can give an example of internal users. Yes? Management. Management. Who else? Marketing. Marketing. Again, who else? Oh, it's not that scary and it said it's fine to make mistakes. Yes. Finance. Finance. So basically you have people like marketing people, finance, HR, you have uh, production managers, etc. All these people are interested in this information. They use this information to make better informed decisions. You also have external users. Again, examples. I already gave you several examples earlier when we were talking. Yes. Investors. Yes? Predators. Predators. Uh, board of directors. Well, board of directors is in kind of, it's different because they receive different, uh, uh, different than external users. Well, they are mostly internal users because they are considered from within the company. They, are, they manage, so the board of directors, they manage the CEO who manages the company. So basically, they are part of the management. Yes. Competition. Yes. Government. Tax agencies. But I know how, uh, you know, I know how the, the board, when you talk about the board and the independence, I know what you, how confusing it could get. So don't worry much about it. But the idea is that if it is within the company, those are internal users, external users are from people with outside the company. Like the IRS, tax agencies, policy makers, all these people, they are external users. So for example, who would ask such questions, right? Can we afford to give our employees a pay raise? Yes? HR. Did the company earn a satisfactory income? Yes? Investors. Could be investors. Who? And next we have, should any product lines be eliminated? Yes. Marketing or management. So you have different, depending on each company and how specialized their departments are. But this is basically, it gives you an idea of like, who asked these questions. Okay? Now, an important thing is that, and many people, this actually caused a big change in the auditing profession and in accounting in general. It was, there, there were several accounting scandals in the early 2000s. Most known are Enron, WorkCom, etc. And what happened is that there was some kind of collusion or basically there was unethical behavior from the companies on this company's side and it was not detected by, or it was not reported by auditors. As a result, there was a huge scandal when Enron went down and the US government, they passed Sarbanes-Oxley in 2002. Now, or for short, the SOX. SOX introduced a lot more stringent or more um, controls. And basically now the CEO, the CEO and the CFO are liable for any misrepresentation of their financial information. And why is that? The US government was afraid that if the people, if investors lose faith or confidence and the stock market, no one will invest, right? So for example, if you don't believe in the other party you're dealing with, that they are telling you the truth, will you deal with that person in the same way? Say for example, if you buy something from eBay, 
compared to buying something from Amazon? Which one do you have? Automatically, you, have, you trust more, eBay or Amazon? Amazon. So if you buy something from Amazon, you expect it to be as described. And you are basically fully protected because if not, you can return it. With eBay, you can always return it and you have some protection, but you still don't know exactly what you're getting because you're dealing with someone that you do not know and you don't, do not necessarily trust. You trust eBay and you trust PayPal, for example, to protect your money, but it doesn't mean necessarily that you will protect, that you will trust it as much as you trust Amazon. And in the same way, they were afraid that if investors and creditors do not trust the accounting information, the financial statements that companies are publishing, then they might not trust them enough to invest in that company or to give them a loan or to basically give them this credit. Let's say if, if uh, eBay decides for a certain reason to remove that seller information, like Craigslist. Think of it as Craigslist. How many of you have used Craigslist? So, okay, so we use Craigslist. But would you, be send, would you agree to send someone money before you receive a product? And if you're selling something on Craigslist, would you be sending, some, sending something out to someone before you receive the money? You don't trust the other person. So what happens to Craigslist at that point? It collapses. This is why Craigslist is not as powerful or as uh, popular as eBay. You may buy it from eBay something from another state or even another country. You will not do the same thing from Craigslist. You want to go see the product itself before you actually pay the money. And if you're selling something, you want to receive the money before you actually send it out, right? So this is all about trust. And the US government was afraid that if people lose faith in the stock market because of unethical behavior, there might be a lot of, uh, basically, the consequences, bad consequences, that would happen, and that might lead to the stock market more or less failing. So instead of, of having this, this, because of the fear of, of, of having the stock market collapse, the US government, they reacted and they basically they signed and they passed SOX in 2002, which introduced a lot more, it made the auditing profession a lot more stricter in a way, they introduced the PCAOB, etc. And generally speaking, when you think about ethics, basically the first thing you do is you have to recognize that there is a situation where, where there's a situation where there's an ethical dilemma. And unfortunately, it's not always black and white. So for example, you find that the CEO is using the CEO is using a uh, company jet, which costs a lot more than. I'm just giving an example. Uh, a lot more than using commercial jet flights. So what what do you think? This is ethical or not ethical? It depends. There might be other. There might be other. Uh, advantages for the CEO to use that one, maybe because he is using that jet or because she's using that jet, she's making more money to the company than she's actually spending, right? So it's not always black and white. You have to actually look at that situation and you have to weigh all the alternatives. You find that your friend is cheating on the exam. Are you going to tell on that person? Many of you probably during your life as students, you saw someone who's cheating in one way or in another. Now, if someone is cheating or copying the whole exam, you are more likely to report that student, right? But if that student is just like, for example, forgot the formula or an equation and wrote that equation on a piece of paper, now it's not as clear. Am I correct? Yes or no? I will close my eye and you can say it. Yes or no? Yes. yes. So this is the situation. And this is what happens with business. It's not always the case that it's clear what you need to do. So this is why you, can, you have to identify also, you have to look at who's, is, who's involved in this. And then you have to weigh the alternatives. What would happen if I go with alternative one? What would happen if I go with alternative two? 
So basically, ethics is to make sure that you have the right, you have the right, uh, basically, it's basically telling the difference between right and wrong. And by the way, many companies, they actually provide you know, with documentation on their ethical policy, basically their policies with regards to ethics. What kind of, of things are acceptable, others that are not, etc. So, question. Which of the following is not a step in accounting? Close with A. B. C. Nice, so you were listening, you were not sleeping. You were so quiet that I thought at a certain point you were sleeping. That was a joke you were supposed to laugh. <laughs> That's better. So which of the following statements about users of accounting information is false? Management is an internal user, taxing authorities are Oh, okay, so A, B, C, D, good. Ethics are the standards of conduct by which one, okay, so that's easy. Let's get this one. Come on, that was easy. All of the above, you see, they all mean the same thing, right, wrong, honest, dishonest, fair, not. Okay, so, now we get to, again, because Basically because <clears throat> people would like to have some kind of uh, the option to be able to compare the company's results, you are a pot potential investor and you want to look at the performance of Apple versus Samsung, okay? You need to be able to compare their information. If each one of them says one thing, it's hard to compare. So as a result, the accounting profession, they came with what we call GAP. US GAP, this is generally accepted accounting principles, and those principles, they are basically like the framework that is used to come up with standardized, more or less standardized uh, uh, financial reports, mostly financial statements, okay? In that case, you can actually compare, for example, the income statement from Samsung to the income statement of uh, Apple. You're basically be, you're comparing the same items, more or less. You can also use it to compare, if you are already an investor of Google, for example, you can compare Google's numbers or Google's income from last year compared to this year. Is the company doing better or worse than last year? Those are the different, different organizations that are involved in accounting standards. The SEC, how many of you heard of the SEC? Okay, so this is the SEC, the Securities and Exchange Commission. This is the main body that is responsible uh, in the US government that is responsible for the stock markets. They require companies to, to uh, report their financial statements in a certain format, etc. And usually they ask the FASB, or Financial Accounting Standards Board, that is the main body that actually develops or comes up or creates those standards that will be basically required by the SEC for all publicly traded companies. The PCAOB was created, this is the Public Accounting Oversight Board, this is, was created after SOX, uh, created by SOX, to oversee the auditing profession. Again, after the scandals from Enron and WorldCom. Now, this is in the US, however, many countries are now, they are following IFRS, which is developed by the international, the, the IASP, International Accounting Standards Board. Before SOX, the AICPA, the American Institute of CPAs, was the one, basically, it was self-governing uh, organization. They used to basically create their own code of conduct, etc. But after SOX, the US government introduced the PCAO. And this, of course, we will only be focusing on U.S. GAAP. We will not talk about international standards. Um, it's confusing as it is, so let's not add to it, right? Those of you who are unfortunate enough to join the accounting major, and that's just a joke, because those will be the fortunate ones. You know why? You will see more of me. Yes. <clears throat> so this is... Those of you who will be going to the accounting major, you will see it in more detail. Uh, we'll see that in 
and uh, basically a task process. So there are, when it comes to GAP, whenever the company is supposed to report assets, they have one of two measurement principles. So assets are what the company owns, okay? Either companies, they can either use a historical cost principle or fair value. Now, historical cost is basically you buy a truck, the company bought the truck for $30,000, they will keep reporting the truck as $30,000. They buy a building for $10 million. Even if in 20 years, even if the value, the actual market value of the building is $15 million, on the financial statements, the company will keep reporting the building at $10 million at the cost of purchase. Why? Because it's easier to, to um, verify. Now when you think about it this way, you say that why not just be evaluated, right? Why not do an appraisal every year or something like that? Things that appraisals are subjective and they cost money and it's easy to do when you have one or two buildings, but let's say if you go with this like Procter & Gamble or Walmart where they have thousands and thousands of locations and you have to and even millions of equipment and parts and stuff like that, you have to reevaluate each asset every year, that's not possible. As a result, they use cost principle. Here there is a trade-off between relevance, how relevant is the information compared to how faithful you representative of the actual uh, of the information here. Because it could be very subjective. Now where do we use Fair value. Fair value is easier to use when you have the information that is readily available. Who can give me an example? Hint, the answer is on the screen. Yes. Yes, okay, when do you use the fair value principle? In which cases it makes sense to use them? Yes. Where assets are actively traded. What does that mean? This is like the stock market. You simply go online and you know the price of the stock. So you might have purchased the stock. Remember that companies invest in each other. If they have extra cash, they will invest in each other. So let's say that the company invested in a bond. When they bought or a stock, when they bought the stock, they bought it for like $10 the stock. Now, the value is $25. The company can easily just check online and see that it was sold yesterday for $25. It's not that hard, it's not subjective, it's there, they have it. So it's easier to use it. And this is when they usually, companies usually use that one. Okay? Now there are two assumptions. So, you have two main assumptions. One of them is called the monetary unit assumption. The other one is the economic entity assumption. What do we mean by the monetary unit assumption? This is, the monetary unit assumption, it means that the accounting system will only deal with transactions that can be expressed in money. Okay? So if you hired a CEO with excellent reputation, like uh, the late Steve Jobs, Steve Jobs being the CEO of Apple increased, used to increase the stock, the stock price a lot, right? However, you cannot put a dollar amount on Steve Jobs being a CEO. You can put a dollar amount next to the sales of the phone. So accounting system will only capture information that is expressed in dollars. You sell a product, you receive, you hire, basically you pay your employees, you pay rent, you get interest, all these things are captured. The economic entity assumption, it simply means that whatever your entity, which is a company, partnership, etc., that is a separate economic entity from the owners and from other companies. So if, for example, you have a small law firm, you have a law firm and you have three or four lawyers, they cannot combine what they buy for their house, what they buy for their houses actually, and what they buy for the company. They cannot combine those two. Their records should be separate. 
Each one is a separate entity. Procter & Gamble cannot combine even if they buy. But Procter & Gamble, they bought GX, okay? Still, they don't have the right, but they do provide different type of, uh, of reports, but their records are kept separate. Then they provide different, more complicated stuff. But each one of them has to be, the records of each one has to be separate. Any questions? Okay, <clears throat> we'll talk about the three types of, of uh, partnerships and we'll continue that lecture 